and then we do yoga style. And these are the outtakes that we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the only time anyone will get me to do yoga. We are sitting yoga style at the Vet Success booth because my special guest, Dr. Mary Gardner, knows these guys. <laughs> They're so graciously allowing us to sit here. We forced our way in. <laughs> But we do know them. <laughs> but if you haven't heard of her, which I seriously doubt, let, let me throw out a, a name here, Lap of Love. That's all we need to do. Her partner, Danny McVetty, has been on the show and gave her pearls of wisdom with me, which is phenomenal. But the other half of the dynamic duel is sitting right beside me right now. It's funny, you said you're six ones, but I don't, I don't look that short. No, no. <laughs> wait, wait, how tall are you? Five, six, I'm Asian height. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've actually never dated an Asian because yeah, they're not well, usually well, my height. That's legit. That's, that's legit. <laughs> I've got the German breeding. And, <laughs> six one. But yeah, when we're sitting, it's not so yeah, bad. No. And I'll slouch because that's okay, what I do. Yeah, so I won't. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, Mary, so why don't we talk about you? Because part of part of the wonderful story about Lap of Love, so we can get into Lap of Love, we can talk about what you've been doing. I just saw a great talk by her, by the way. Thank um, you. The, the, I guess the, the notes will be up, right, in January or something? Something, something, something like, like that, that, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll get the notes to you if you need to see them. But uh, drmarygardner.com if you need to learn more, and there's a whole bunch of stuff, or lapoflove.com, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, but why don't we talk about you? So, what got you into veterinary medicine? <laughs> okay. okay. And then, what sort of life changes or whatever led to what you're doing now. Okay, yeah, well, right, I, I, I guess I'm not the normal path. When I was growing up, I never thought veterinary medicine. We, we had some dogs and cats, but I never went to the vet with my, with my parents. Um, when my family, when my parents divorced, we never, like, uh, you know, I, I, my mom and I could barely afford a cat, so like, let alone care. So I never really went to the, went, went to the vet clinic. I also was, you know, um, not set on going to school forever in eight years or anything like that. So imagining going to, to uh, undergrad and then, and then continuing on to some advanced degree was definitely not anything I wanted. So um, I love the uh, marine world and so marine science. My father is a, is a diver and um, he's also a computer software guy, but he's, he's a diver. So we spent the summers in the Turks and Caicos Islands when I was growing up, for a couple of summers, not all of them, but um, he was a dive master. And so he would, I would try to pretend to go scuba diving with them, right? And, uh, and I just love the, the ocean. So I, I went to marine science uh, for my undergrad. So I went to University of Miami, Miami and did my marine science undergrad thinking I'd be like a dolphin trainer. Okay. Yep. Okay, like that was my like, big, big wish in life. <laughs> High aspirations. That never actually led to anything, right? Because it, when, when you find out your degree, what you hope it is about, it actually turned out to be about salinity and plate tectonics and like nothing cool about flipper. So long story short, um, I, my sister worked at my father's software company, which, which at the time was large. It had 300 people about, wow. about yeah. So it was a very large enterprise-wise uh, order fulfillment software. And so my sister said, Mir, you have the gift of gab. Why don't you come and work at, you know, at, at Ecometry, it was called, and you could be a trainer for the software. So I was like, sure, I have no fear of public speaking. So I was like, I get to talk for all day, like, sounds great. So um, I, would, I would get to meet the clients or the, the companies that bought the software, okay. arrange it to, to best suit their needs. So I helped everything from like shoe manufacturers to, to, to uh, pet supplies to, um, there's some crazy stuff, even fruit, like Cushman fruit. So we had to deal with uh, expiration dates and spoilage and things like that. So I really got to learn logistics of all different kinds of companies, which was, was really interesting. I loved it. Then I advanced from the training department into product development. And so I can't code, Michael, like don't, don't ask me how to code, but I would design the software basically on paper, almost like an architect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would design it and then work with a team of developers. So it's kind of like R&D. 
wow. and arrange a quality control and then roll out and marketing of that product. So I really enjoyed that. Um, but it was during that time uh, when I had my, my original dog like that got me through high school and college, who was a Samoyed, which is an unusual breed. But um, my brother was babysitting her and he had, a, he had a Rottweiler. And I love Rottweilers, but um, him and my, that dog and my dog got in a fight. And so the Rottweiler, of course, is much larger and, and you know, has bigger teeth. So he actually, you know, they got in a big fight. And so, so she survived the fight, broken jaw, massive wounds. I was in and out of the hospital with her for about three weeks. And one day when she was in the hospital, the hospital called me. And I had no idea about vet, the vet world. Like, I brought her in to get, I got, like, the cheapest spay I could for her. Like, I, I had, I could, you know, flea medicine and heartworm. That was all I knew. So I brought, I like, one day they called me and they said, can you come and, come and visit her? Because we just did a, a blood transfusion. And I'm like, I thought she's coming home, you know? And so I went up, she looked yellow, which, oh, you know, really? I know what that means now, but then I didn't. And so she just looked at me, rolled her head back, and, and, and died in my arms. Oh, so that grief of losing her in my early 30s really left me wondering if there's something else I want to do in my life. And, and so I looked into going back to veterinary, to school, and thought, I want to become a veterinarian and help families that love their pet as much as I loved Snow White. And, um, and so I went to vet school at 31 and got out at 35. So it's a big career change. So it's okay, you know, if, 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 if life brings you a different journey, go take it, you know, and if it doesn't work out. I graduated. What? We were, you graduated at 35? <laughs> yes! Yes! I was the sixth oldest in my class. I was second. <laughs> Martin, if you're out there, he was 38. Oh, uh, I love it. Recovering corporate lawyer. Oh, what were you before? I was I was a professional student. <laughs> I, nice. was grad, I was in graduate school. Oh, graduate. School. Okay. In neuroscience. Oh my God, not you're wanting to do that. Smarty pants. No, I was no, not no, a smarty no, no, pants. No, no, no. Okay, but. It, you know what, I think it was really good for me to go in my 30s. I think I, oh, yeah. I my time management skills and just working in corporate world, like dealing I, I, with people? Dealing, 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 okay, veterinarians are always like, oh, we're so, so introverts, right? I'm like, uh, work with programmers, <laughs> right? They live in a world, they put big headsets on, they like Dungeons and Dragons are their like pastime. I have no idea, right? Star Trek, I had to learn all these things. So I, and I love programmers. So um, dealing with them, when I come into the vet world, I'm like, no, we're not introverts. Like maybe not all of us are extroverts like you or I, but um, it, you know, we have, a, we have a great community in the vet world. And I like that I went to school in my thirties um, and, uh, and was a little bit more established. So that way when I got out too, I think I could, I was able to handle client interactions a little, a little better, you know, just I just, stress I just, in general, stress right? In, right. Good life and the only thing, the only regret I have is I could not do the all-nighters that the younger ones, who you know who you are. Yeah. You'd be no, like, Mike fell asleep again. <laughs> like, Listen, <laughs> like the, 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 the treatment room or the, like, overnight, I'd get the cushion and sleep in the, in the cage. Yeah. So, I've been there. I've done it.